of the Society of the Army of the Cumberland, and he will, he will be its first president, in fact, and will create these, these veterans' organizations and will be instrumental in those until the rest of, for the rest of his life. His wife, Emily Clarinda, she passes away finally in 1892, and he will spend the, re the, six, the remaining six years of his life in Ogden, Utah, where he is buried. He will pass away on the 21st of January, 1898. Now, what's the legacy of Nathan Kimball? Well, he has two grandchildren who are buried in Arlington National Cemetery. They are, one's a colonel in the Air Force. The other one was a colonel in the, um, the Army, I believe. All right. He was, yes, he was. He was in the Army. He was a judge, a judge advocate general. His son, William Augustus, will be a West Point graduate, and will he has another son, uh, John, or James rather, not James, not John, he does have a, a son John, but James will be a judge and a, um, in, Utah, in Utah State, all right, he'll be a federal judge. So he, may, he is able to acquire that legacy of being somebody in the community. His children were someone in the community, and so that is essentially the life of Nathan Kimball in a nutshell. I do thank you for coming. Ran a little bit short. I was hoping to run a little bit longer than that, but uh, I do thank you for coming, and I will open the floor for questions. I know Shields tried to take credit for the victory here at Kernstown. Did Kimball ever get his, his due for, for what he did here? Yes and no. In terms of the signs, I mean, if you go down to the sign that's down here by the Opecan Church, it says James Shields defeated uh, Jackson here. If you get a look at Wikipedia, it says that James Shields defeated Jackson, although it doesn't now. J uh, Nathan Kimball finally is finally given his due on Wikipedia. But he did receive at least enough recognition to be promoted for his victory less than a month after the battle to Brigadier General for his victory here at Kernstown. So he did receive promotion for it, but that was about the only extent of his recognition. He didn't receive the thanks of Congress or anything like that. Can you go over the part about in Front Royal about Bell Boy? I, I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, terribly sorry. Well, in when he is recalled, when the James Shields Division is recalled from Fredericksburg, they go, Belle Boyd had been, on the May 23rd, 1862, she had gone over to Stonewall Jackson himself and said, here's the disposition of the Union forces. This is, what this is where they are at. This is what they look like. This is their numbers. And then she, then she leaves. She, she flees home. She is denounced by a citizen of Front Royal when, when Kimball retakes, retakes it in April. He's, he's there for one day, he's the lead brigade, he take, retakes the town, has this lady denounce Bell, and he arrests Bell on that information. Okay. I thought it was, I just want to make sure. No problem. And then James Shield has her released the following day when he gets there. <laughs> She's 19, I mean, come on. <laughs> James Shields has an eye for a pretty face, just so you know. But uh, any other questions? All right, well, thank you for coming.